A super team is a team of three or more individual teams from the same league. The main objective is to let individual teams work with teams from other countries, regions and other cultures. It is our wish that through these efforts, teams will learn and excel together and possibly continue exchanges beyond this event. Participants in the super team are required to contribute on teamwork and knowledge sharing, regardless of culture, age or result in the competition. All are expected to compete, learn, have fun, and grow up. This is my hometown, Tianjin. It's a very beautiful city in China. The RCAP Cospace International Invitation Tournament was held here. I learned Cospace Robot from 2019. I had joined the Duran Fix First Steps. In 2019, RCAP Robot Cup in Mexico, I won the champion as my best result. I changed my group to Cospace Rescue last year and joined the U19 First Step Group competition in May in Tianjin Invitation Tournament. This was me in the competition. And I won the third place in this group. I joined all three competitions include online challenge, Tianjin on-site challenge, and online super team challenge. My strategy is always to plan a good pass to collect sets of RRCCBB objects as possible as I can, so the robot can gain higher score to win the game. Certainly. Before designing the pass, I should design the deposit pass firstly, or the robot cannot deposit objects quickly and waste time. In Super Team Challenge, I was very happy to make Japanese and Indonesia friends. We used the Japanese partners called Finally. He got a very higher score, about 2000. This is a very good chance for us to learn from each other. And I hope I can meet you in Tianjin next year. I am playing in the category of RoboCup Asia Pacific Cospace Rescue First Step Under GQ. My question is, how fast the deposit area is going to be able to そのためにはロボットのセンサーから壁までの距離に応じてロボットの動きを変えることで壁から一定の距離を保つ必要があります。その結果、より早くデポジットすることができるようになりました。結論として地図を見ながら壁からの距離のルールを見つけることでより早くデポジットエリアにたどり着けることがわかりました。私の戦略について説明します。壁の近くに物が少ない場合、ロボットをランダムに移動させるか、地図上で時計回りまたは半時計回りに回転させます。そして時計回りまたは半時計回りに回転させるか、ランダムに移動させるかは時間によって変えます。壁の方に多くのオブジェクトがある場合、時間に応じて壁に沿って進むか
ランダムに移動するかが決まります。オブジェクトを1つから3個を取っている場合は壁に沿って進みます。4つ以上のオブジェクトを取っている場合はランダムに移動します。私の AI アルゴリズムは物体を回収するために位置ごとにオブジェクトの動きを変えるというものです。私は AI や C 言語のツールを使う予定です。私がそのツールやリソースを使う利点は AI でプログラムのベースを作り C で新しい変装を作ることができるということです。Implementation, the methods. We use four methods in our program. They are first, using three ultrasonic sensors to avoid the obstacles and trap. These sensors are on the front, right side, and on the left side of the robot. Second, using RGB sensor to detect colors and collect it. It's also used to detect the deposit area. This sensor is below of the robot. Third, use position X and Y to define what should the robot do in a certain area and use the key action to more defining what should the robot do and where should the robot go in a particular situation. Fourth, use the markers on the map to help us encode to the deposit area. For this, we use the RGB sensors to detect the color and the key action to make the robot turn to 0 degree or 180 degree. デバッグの方法について説明します。まず、ロボットが期待通りに動かない場合は、右の図を見てどこが悪いのかを考えます。原因が分かったら、その原因を表す新しい変数を作ります。それを C 言語を使って元のプログラムに追加します。これで問題が解決します。And this is our flowchart. 